here I am with the wonderful, amazing Stephen Rosenfield Thanks. at his house. Very I'm grateful to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Steve is the founder of the What I Be Project. Stephen has been supporting people around the world to share their hearts by diving into their insecurities. Like I am not my body image. You know, a little bit about the project is I started it in 2010, and I basically wanted um, to do something with my photography that had meaning. You know, I was taking a lot of pictures of, um, you know, musicians, mm -hmm. you know, at live concerts, and um, I love doing that, showing people's passion um, with my passion, but I felt like it wasn't really um, hitting people deep enough. You know, it wasn't really emotional. It wasn't something that told... Um, I mean, it told a story, but it didn't tell a story um, that can create that could create such um, a big dialogue, you know, and, and affect people in a um, a big way. So, I just um, I wanted to come up with a project that kind of went against the norm on Facebook or mm -hmm. you know Instagram or whatever. And that's exactly what Steve has done. The project started as a Facebook experiment and has grown to over 2,500 photos that have been taken at colleges, universities around the country, as well as of celebrities who are owning their insecurities. Through this project, Steve wanted to give people the opportunity to, to allow themselves to be vulnerable um, on their terms rather than somebody else attacking them or you know, bullying them or whatever. So it, it basically, I just wanted to create dialogue between, um, you know, friends, family, strangers, um, and relatability yeah. in a project mm -hmm. that, um, you know, somehow could connect the most people possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, I came up with a project to, um, you know, write on people. I, you know, I thought about having... You know, different props where people can use props in their pictures and stuff like that. But I don't want it to um, take away from, you know, their eyes. Mm -hmm. Pictures all about the eyes and um, I wanted to focus on that without anything else. Mm -hmm. Kind of. It was such a beautiful and challenging opportunity to sit with Steve and go through my insecurity. What I came up with was, I do not have to convince you. Can you share what are some of the biggest um, moving insecurities that people have shared with you? Like the biggest experiences where people have been really vulnerable? All of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think everybody's insecurity is big to them. Mm -hmm. You know, your insecurity so, is the same level as somebody else's insecurity, whether it's about mm -hmm. sexual assault or um, eating disorder or, um, you know, class or whatever, mm -hmm. um, race, I think, um, you know, some of them might uh, be more relatable to more people, but I think overall, struggle is struggle and hurt is hurt, and um, I think when anybody shares that type of stuff, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't really just pick one. No, but. totally. <laughs> totally. And so, throughout the past five years of doing this amazing and expansive adventure, yep. um, have you felt like it's been interesting? Has it had any impact on you? Has it transformed your life in any way? Um, yeah, it's taken... Um, it's allowed me to be more aware of maybe what other people are going through. Mm -hmm. Rather than... I mean, I still judge people. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I still do it. But when I do it, I'm more cautious and more aware of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Rather than just doing it and being like, yes, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I might do it and be like, well, hey, maybe this is why they're being that way. So it, it allows me to um, kind of be aware of my actions towards that person. Mm -hmm. You know, how yeah. they're being, my, there might be a reason why they're being that way. Or So yeah, it's allowed me to be more open mm -hmm. to people and myself and how I'm treating people. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Has it opened you up um, hearing different insecurities from the broad spectrum of like a 95-year-old? Because I know you did a whole series with yeah, all of yeah, these yeah. people in their 90s to these teenagers. You know, have you seen any similarities in that realm? Yeah. Um, 
our stuff never changes. <laughs> <laughs> we have our insecurities until we die. That's what it tells me. Um, I mean, yeah, it, we, we all have our stuff. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if we're 15 or 95. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of things when you're 95 don't bother you so much as to like your looks and stuff like that. I think that's the last thing you worry about, you know. Um, but there's always something to be insecure about, whether it's your age or your your mortality or even anxiety. I mean, some people have anxiety at 100 years old still. Yeah. So I, I think it, it, uh, it, yeah, our insecurities are with us till we die. <laughs> we might as well embrace them, right? Embrace them. And do you feel like this project's about that? Of course, yeah. Embracing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think um, if we share our insecurities and embrace them, mm-hmm. we don't have to like them. Nobody likes our insecurities, but mm-hmm. um, if we embrace them, it kind of takes the power away from them. Yes. You know, nobody can really use it against us, not even ourselves. Totally. You know, um, once we accept them, it allows us to just like kind of understand them a little more and accept them yeah do you feel like it gives us an opportunity to stop hiding from them or hiding behind them and kind of just look at them and yeah i mean it's kind of like the whole idea if you like if you want to stop smoking Mm -hmm. and you don't tell anybody Mm -hmm. you can smoke wherever you want (laughs) but if you tell one person that you want to stop smoking then you can't smoke in front of that person Mm -hmm. the more people you tell that you want to stop smoking then you're held accountable in front of all those people. Mm-hmm. So I think if we share our insecurity with more people, then A, we're held accountable. We're also accepted for for whatever we tell that person. You know, they don't have to agree, but, but it's just basically um, letting more people know so they understand mm-hmm. the whole story, you know. And, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's understanding yourself. It's accepting yourself and, and learning a different way to deal with it than what we're used to and that's like hiding it because of our ego or hiding it because other people are going to make fun of us or mm. you know stuff like that because we're afraid do you think there's a common theme behind why people hide from their insecurities yeah i mean it's all ego i think it's looking it's it's they're afraid of looking bad mm. you know um they're afraid of getting picked on or treated differently or um I mean, it's all it's all about looking good or bad. That's why we do everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Being right. Yeah, being mm. right. Looking good. I mean, why do we do anything? Why do we hand a homeless person money? Because mm. mm-hmm. it makes us look good. Even if we do enjoy it, you know, why do we do it? Why do we, um, you know, buy cods for people when they're just going to throw them away? Mm. Like that next day for their birthday or something. You know, mm. so it's, we do it because we don't want to look like a jerk. We don't, you know, we, we always want to look good at whatever we do. Um, some people that drives and some people, they just do it because they enjoy it. But mm-hmm. um, I think what it all comes down to is looking good or bad. And I think yeah. our insecurities, if we hide them, nobody can kind of say they look bad or good. They can make up their own story. But, you know, they look bad because of that. But um, I think when... You know, we share our insecurity. We're allowing ourselves to say we look good because of it. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're powerful in it, mm-hmm. people can't really say anything. You know, you can be the most... Uh, I've talked, you know, to people who um, appear to be, like, super confident. Mm-hmm. You know, you, people are going to kind of believe what they see. You know, so if you're a super confident person, you show people that you're really confident... People are going to think you're confident. Mm-hmm. But then when you sit down and you talk to somebody and you're like, oh my God, like I have no confidence. It's just oh. all a show. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So that's, you know, totally. it, it's basically you show people you're happy then mm-hmm. on Facebook and they're going to think you're happy. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, if you show people that you are struggling with something, then it allows people to um, help. It allows people to be aware of what's going on mm-hmm. and act accordingly rather than know totally do you think by showing opening up and being vulnerable um, it also allows other people to do that and meet you in that space I think so I think once we um, I mean the heart is obviously 
crazy thing the way it works. Someone shares something, the other person feels like they can share something back, you know? Um, yeah, it's just like if you get in an argument. I think I've said this before, but if you get in an argument and um, someone says sorry, the first thing you feel like you have to say is sorry back. Mm -hmm. um, I think w when somebody shares anything, you know, if they share something that's like a story about their parents or whatever, then you feel like, like, oh my God, I had that same or like a, a similar mm. thing, you know, just to kind of relate to that person. Totally. It makes it relatable and connecting. Yeah. So do you feel like you're offering an opportunity just by this project mm. of helping people connect? Yeah, I think so. People that, you know, we're already connected to and strangers, mm -hmm. you know, I think it opens because... I mean, I've talked to people, um, there was this one girl, um, you know, we became friends from the project, um, I became friends actually with her family, mm -hmm. um, amazing family, and she came with her brother, and she did her image on, um, an eating disorder, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, and her brother never, like, didn't know, so he found out that day, mm -hmm. um, wow. And it's great to see them interact on Facebook. They're super close. The whole family is extremely close. And I think, you know, obviously a lot of it um, has to do with, like, them being able to help and, like, things that the family went through and, um, you know, different things like that. But I, I think, yeah, once one person opens up, the other person has, uh, you know, an open heart as well to receive and to share. And because totally. it's relatable and that's why the project I think has become so successful is because there's not one picture that you can look at and not relate to it yeah you know, there's at least one picture in that project that everybody in this world can relate to mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and that's I think that's pretty big having that display and having that opportunity that everybody yeah. everybody can relate to this and you said you just said you know it opens up this door in your heart mm -hmm. you know and and opening up that door to let other people from all over the world feel that and express that. Like, oh my gosh, this girl on the other side of the country right. has an eating disorder too, and it's not just me. And right. Wow. Yeah, no, you're not alone. Yeah. Not <laughs> alone. Not alone. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that we can feel really alone when we're caught up in our own insecurities? Yeah, I mean, I think we feel alone. That's why we don't share them too, is because we feel that nobody else has that problem. When everybody has that problem. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. So in doing this whole project and, and doing all of this work, how do you stay really true to you? Do you feel like this project has helped you stay really true to you? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I've always been um, one to communicate, you know, um, whether it was my opinion or, <laughs> you know, in the past, um, to more communicate like what is now. Um, mm -hmm. but I think, um, the project has opened me up to allow myself to not worry about my ego and not worry about, um, looking good, you know, mm -hmm. and, and saying that, yeah, I'm not right. You yeah. know, like even when I have an opinion and I voice my opinion to someone and, um, you know, I'll say, you know, I'm, I'm not right. This is just my opinion. This mm -hmm. is just the way I feel about it. You know? Totally. Um, yeah, I think it's just allowed me to be more aware of what's going on for me, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but like I said, I mean, I'm still judgmental, and at times I'm, I have to check myself. Uh -huh. You know, every once in a while, um, my friends, if I'm being judgmental or something, they'll be like, okay, Mr. What I Be. <laughs> and I'll be like, you're right. <laughs> okay, Mr. What I Be. Yeah. And Mr. Then that what I Be. Puts me in check. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yep. So you created this project and you're keeping yourself in check too. Of course. I have to. My friends keep me in check. My awesome. girlfriend. Um, awesome. Gotta love the girlfriends. Oh yeah. They're good at that. Oh please. She's, My fiance she's amazing. She's about that. Oh <laughs> good. I'm glad. She's amazing. <laughs> she sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean it's a story, um, actually a quick story of Michael Franti, um, mm -hmm. who the project is named after one of his songs, What I Be. Um, he just did a um, an event for the Dalai Lama's 80th birthday, mm -hmm. and the Dalai Lama said to him, um, you know, because Michael has a lot of tattoos, mm -hmm. he said to him, like, I had this impression of you mm -hmm. from all the tattoos and the hair, and you know, 
um, no shoes, and they just, you know, I had an impression of you. And mm-hmm. then you sang, and your words changed my impression. Mm-hmm. So even the Dalai Lama is judgmental. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he admits it, and he embraces it, and he's not afraid to, like, check himself, mm-hmm. you know? So even the, the most open and um, accepting person in the world is judgmental. It's judgmental. So judgmental. You just, I think the difference is... Being judgmental and not knowing it, or being judgmental and realizing you're being judgmental, and mm. that's when you can change it. And admitting it, and seeing it, and being present in it. And yeah. And what? sometimes I'm like, I'm being judgmental right now, <laughs> and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm willing to be okay with it right now. Yeah. Not trying to be all pious, just right. honoring, just, like, this is me. Yeah, I'm just being judgmental right now, and it's okay. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. Love it. Awesome. So, where can we find you? Right uh, Facebook. Facebook. What I be. Um, Instagram. Instagram. Twitter. Mm-hmm. Social media guru over here. Um, what else? Pinterest. Pinterest. We were just talking about this. Tumblr. Oh, you were on there. Website. Hmm. Is it your name? Um, website is whatibeproject.com. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram is whatibeproject.com. Mm-hmm. Facebook. Um... You could type in Steve Rosenfield and my photography page comes up and that's where all the What I Be stuff is. It says What I Be Project on it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitter is SJ Rosenfield. Okay. And Pinterest, I think, is SJ Rosenfield. All right. And so Tumblr all the ladies is, who want to find you on Pinterest. And Tumblr is What I Be Project. Gotcha. You can go to the website and all those socials are on there. So you don't even have to remember them. Just go to whatibeproject.com. Mm-hmm. Click on the little social. Mm-hmm. Logos. Find there and get on there everything. and check you out <laughs> yeah. and check out all of the amazing images and see if you know it opens you up a little bit. Even check out image. me, I'll Even be on there. Image. Yeah, my insecurity. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that I'm here. Thank you for taking a picture of me and no, thank you. being open and sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah. I'm very grateful. Cool. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. All yeah. right, and thank you. Thanks for being here. Don't forget, check out the Define Meaning Project on Facebook, and you can visit me at www.meganfolkfrying.com. You don't have to spell that for them. Uh, M-E-A-G-H-A-N F-O-L-K F-R-E-U-N-D It's meganfolkfrying.com There you go. Yeah! It's good to go. Hold on, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. I gotta put my strawberries in.